From CGTN headquarters in Beijing, this is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to The Hub. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. Starting October the 1st, China will implement its revised regulations on the entry and exit of foreigners and expats. Among the highlights is a newly introduced K visa designed specifically for young tech talents from around the world. This policy has drawn wide attention in the international community. In this new context, China's more open and inclusive approach is an invitation to global young scientists and interviewers and a new step forward in the country's opening up. How should we understand this move in light of China's development needs? How might it inject fresh vitality into its economy, advance further opening up and strengthen the country's influence? on the global stage. Now to delve deeper into these questions, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in Chengdu. We have Zhang Mengmeng, a researcher from the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, whose doctoral thesis focused on skilled international migrants in China. In Sochi, Russia, we have Zhang Gan, professor of economics at the University of International Business and Economics. And in Los Angeles, we have William Lee, chief economist at the Milken Institute. Lady first, a moment, let me go to you. You've been studying international migrants in China. Tell us about this, key, uh, this K visa. What is it all about? And what direct or maybe indirect impacts do you see from uh, launching this very visa program? Thanks for having me here. I was very excited to hear about the introduction of the K-Visa. From a migration perspective, it is a smart move and bold innovation to China's immigration regime. It is precisely targeted at young tech talent with great flexibility. Importantly, it doesn't require employer sponsorship or invite from China. It also promises more generous terms for entry, duration of stay, and a wide range of activities. So this makes China more attractive at a time when other countries are tightening their work visas. Beyond the visa category, the K visa signals that China is becoming more open and positioning itself as an active player in the global race for talent. So in the long run, it may shift the global talent flow between the global north and the south. Thanks. Right, basically it is saying that um, expats, international talents in technology and science, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to not just transit in China, stay in China, but live and work in China, right? Um, uh, William, in the United States, how do you see this uh, Chinese initiative, the latest among all the visa-free regimes, by launching this K visa, saying to the global tech talents, look, China is a place for you and for you to stay. Yeah, this is a really interesting signal that China is sending. China's always recognized that it's an open economy. It's always been exporting a lot of goods and services. Uh, it's imported capital, it's exported capital. But now it's recognized that one of the most important factors of production is labor, talented labor, uh, and it's saying to the world, hey, not only are we exporting students abroad and, and getting trained and coming back home, but we want trained people to come here on their own and recognize that China is a good place to be if you have a lot of STEM talents, science, technology uh, kind of talents, and if you're entrepreneurial, if you can start a business. And I think that's a, a really interesting signal that China is sending to the rest of the world, that you come here and not only, uh, not only bring your talents here and work for some company, but you work for yourself and create your own innovations as best you can. Professor Zhang Gong, let me turn to you. Do you see this uh, K-Visa uh, generating not just uh, discussions and debates online, but popularity among expats, especially in science and tech technology, and uh, what this might mean for China's uh, tech future? It signals the, uh, the message that China's uh, competition in the uh, talent space is taken to the uh, international arena. As we all know, you know, China and the United States are engaged in a fierce competition across science and technology fields. Um, and the competition for talents is a centerpiece of that. Um, this actually reminds me of the recent uh, decision by the Trump administration regarding H-1 visa uh, fee associated with that program. And it's asking for 
a hundred thousand dollars. It's kind yeah. of an extortionary number for programs like this. On the other hand, the fact of the matter is that uh, it's uh, it, it moving in the exact opposite direction. It's saying to the world that don't worry about that hundred thousand dollars. Come to China. You know, there are plenty of jobs uh, opening for people who are talented uh, in in STEM fields. Meng Meng, your research focused on the social integration of skilled migrants here, right here in China. Compared with earlier visa programs, what breakthroughs or uh, what exciting new features do you think this K visa represent? Uh, yeah, in my field work, I found China's rapid development and unsaturated market offers lots of opportunities for skilled migrants to start their business and innovate, but they might be constrained by their visa category. So compared with the work visa, K-Visa brings them more independence, autonomy, and flexibility. For instance, the K-Visa decouples employer sponsorship, which gives migrants more independence. It also empowers migrants to have great autonomy to pursue entrepreneurship, research, and exchange. This makes it easier for them to change their purpose of stay and stay more opportunities in China. Right. You've also looked at uh, how migrant narratives contribute to policymaking. So from your perspective, how could China use this uh, narrative to tell the story of attracting more global talents? Uh, yeah, narratives can be a powerful way to connect the policy with real human experience. In addition to official messaging, it would be great to showcase the real stories of young STEM graduates, entrepreneurs who use the K-Visa to seize opportunities and build a career here, as well as through the lens of bloggers. Such storytelling narratives grounded in the real-life experience, speaking to ambition and possibilities, makes the policy feel more relatable and emotionally engaging. When the key visa is framed in the way that connects with young talent's aspirations, it becomes more than just a visa. It's an invitation delivered with empathy and openness. William, can you uh, tell us a bit about America's own um, you know, immigration policies, especially um, those who, who might be mirroring or corresponding to China's current uh, K-Visa? Uh, what are the successful lessons and also experiences uh, that countries, especially China, can draw from? One of the reasons why the U.S. put in the H-1B visa policy has been to try to attract talent, to try to bring more innovation into the United States to, to accelerate the development of key sectors in the United States. And so I, the history of the H-1B visa has been tied to specific companies, specific sectors, as those are the ones that they want to develop. China has really gone a different direction and said, we want to have innovation, but we want to attract people with a certain spirit. Uh, an entrepreneurial spirit, um, and we want the entrepreneurs to come here. But in order to do that, China has to also have the ecosystem that promotes those kind of innovations. It has to have the research uh, uh, universities, which it does. It has to have the legal protections for intellectual property, and it has to have a lot of the, the, the infrastructure, intellectual and legal infrastructure, to guarantee that entrepreneurs will be able to keep the fruits of their labor. Well, Professor Gong, that is a point to think about, right? Uh, you know, uh, initiating this K-Visa policy is just, uh, you know, the first step. And then uh, there's got to be um, institutions uh, in place to uh, make sure that those expats who come to China stay in China and keep innovating, producing uh, for the greater good of, of, of the Chinese economy and the global economy. Well, I think the soft infrastructure that William has been talking about, I'm not sure it's totally lacking here. I mean, there are um, hundreds of thousands of foreigners uh, settling here in China, establishing their businesses and making tons of profits out of it. So a lot of African people, for example, in the city of Guangzhou, um, in, in Shanghai, there are Americans, there are Europeans who come here and set up a small business that have been living here for years and years. I think what's special about this K visa program is that it's attracting, um, you know, talent oriented people in science and technology uh, in uh, attracting people coming here to either looking for jobs uh, in, in high tech companies, um, as well as uh, uh, maybe you're starting, starting up uh, small businesses uh, of the science and technology in nature. Um, there are many uh, municipal governments in China across the land that have those incentive programs to cultivate small businesses. And I think this program uh, is enabling 
uh, a possibility that these kind of uh, incentive programs can be extended to foreigners as well. Meng Meng, what do you think? Um, what kind of uh, institutional designs or, or policy support uh, do you think should come in place uh, so that um, they're consistent and supportive of this K visa program once it's enacted? Yeah, I would say the entry policy is a great facilitation right now. But one of the urgent issues now is to build a post-entry supporting system to integrate foreign talent into the structure of the industry and the larger Chinese society. In this way, we can return them in the long run. And another thing I think is like we maybe probably have some language training programs and to help them know Chinese culture and the customs easily. Meng Meng, how do you see the push and pull from Washington and Beijing when it comes to attracting or, uh, or, or rather uh, uh, dispelling or making it unattractive for, for, for expats to, to stay in their respective countries, China versus the United States, especially in, in terms of AI and high tech fields? Yeah, I think this is the nature of global race for talent. But I think what makes the KVSA special is that it really captured a very good timing that focused on the young entrepreneurs and STEM graduates at their early career stage who are looking for opportunities. So compared to the work skilled visas around the world, um, they all require market ready skills and uh, capital before entry. By contrast, the key visa allow young talent uh, time and space to test their ideas, um, build networks, and grow their business from scratch. Such inclusiveness and the environment will make China more appealing to young innovative talent. Meng Meng, tell us about the 72 migrants that you've tracked and studied over the years. I mean, what impressed you when you, you did field interviews with them, uh, field research? Uh, what made them stay in China? Uh, what do they like about China? What do they not like about China? Um, in my field of work, as the skilled migrants in Chengdu live a quite good quality of life, they benefit a lot from working in China as it advances their careers and who have good work-life balance or helps them make their business dream come true. But on the other side, like the living experience in China is really good. The are very uh, fascinated infrastructures, urban infrastructures mix and the digital platforms make their life easier. And more importantly, they feel they are really welcomed and they feel the warmth from Chinese people, which makes them to stay at home. William, um, I still need to ask you about this uh, US H-1B policy overhaul because it, it concerns the, the fate of many um, expat students who studied in the US, who wanted to stay, and their companies are just reluctant uh, to pay that much higher uh, of a premium to make them stay in their company and there, therefore in the United States. This H-1B uh, visa program now uh, asking companies reportedly to pay up to 100,000 uh, while lottery rules were revised to favor high paying, high skilled applicants. What do you make of all this? Well, as I said, that's a way of rationalizing our labor supply in the United States. We have a lot of very uh, talented people that were domestically produced and domestically born here, and we want to make sure that they have the opportunities to get a good job. Uh, so the H-1B visa is designed to draw in the very high-value, high-talented people. And so it's a way of, of, of stratifying the labor force in a way to allow more opportunities for our own domestic residents, which, you know, it, it makes sense, just as China is trying to make as well as it can uh, the, the, the opportunities for its own students uh, as well. Uh, by the way, I, I, I've never said the K, K visa program is bad. In fact, I think it's a great innovative way of attracting talent. All I've said was you need more of an ecosystem in order to make that successful in, in promoting innovation in your country. Well, do you think when and if the Democrats come into office in a few years, uh, uh, this Trump era policy could be overhauled uh, yet again? Uh, I mean, I mean um, mm -hmm. but do you think that would be the case? Not at all. But the, the Democrats themselves, I think, were, you know, when they were in power, Democrats have traditionally been the most pro-U.S. labor people around. Um, they're the ones who really want to keep out the foreign competition and limit the amount of foreign trade and other types of competition. So so as far as the, the two parties concerned, um, 
promoting job opportunities for our domestic residents has been a high priority on both sides. So this policy is likely not to be reversed, especially when we re recognize, uh, as the Trump administration has, the amount of damage that has been done in hiring cheap foreign talent in substitutes for domestic talent. That's, that's the, the, uh, the problem that we're trying to address. You know, William, uh, I really don't no. know which party is the pro-free trade uh, party uh, right now in the United States. I used to know, but I, now I don't. Uh, Professor John. Yeah, well, um, I mean, look at the history of H-1B program. I think overall, you know, there's a resounding success story. Um, the, you know, you look at the uh, Elon Musk, for example. Uh, if without that program, there would be no Elon Musk in the United States. There wouldn't be no Tesla in the United States. There would be no X Space in the United States. So, so I think um, you know, if you look at the, um, the 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 kind of jobs being bought through this program, they have contributed in immensely, immensely to the competitiveness and, and innovativeness of the high tech companies in the United States. Um, and, and in terms of you know labor substitution by these foreign. Uh, students and foreign uh, 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 scientists, engineers. I, I think there got to be an assumption that there is indeed a, a supply of these kind of people domestic in the United States. I don't see it at, the, at this point. You go to the top universities in the United States um, in science and technology programs, in physics department, in math department, in electric engineering programs. I mean, you, you look, look at the, how many uh, people are, uh, uh, you know, in domestic Americans in these uh, programs at top universities. And I would imagine maybe definitely less than a half, even less than a third. So against that backdrop, you know, what, <laughs> is, there, is that the case that when American college students, or high school students, when they apply for a program at say MIT or Harvard, do they actually look at H-1B program and say, look, you know, there are lots of people coming into this, pro into this country and they're taking away our jobs and I'm not going to apply for MIT for that reason. That, that's an absurd argument in my view. You know, it doesn't work like that. I think the, the fact of the matter is uh, 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 America uh, population and uh, high school students uh, uh, don't overwhelmingly like these programs, don't, these, these uh, discipline programs in, in science and technology under STEM programs. Uh, and, and the country is being competitive uh, is, is very much based on, you know, this need, this gap is being filled by foreign people.